in this lecture, the cryptic, spooky nonsense I've been talking about will be cryptic and spooky no more. Because finally, we're actually going to put like a kind of mock-up of a workout together using this synergy protocol and all the aforementioned principles. Now, if you haven't seen the first videos in this series, the last like five videos I did, I encourage you to watch them because it's gonna explain why I'm putting together a workout this way. But this is it. This is finally gonna be kind of how to structure a workout around these concepts that we've gone over in all these other videos. So here we go. Synergy protocol, here's how a workout structure is gonna be made. Now, there's a lot of ways to go about doing this. I'm gonna give you the simplest rendition that I've done the one that I think is easiest to use. Uh, and in this one, there's going to be four training phases, although sometimes there can be five, depending on who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. But for argument's sake, this is the simplest version, okay? Now, the first thing I mentioned in one of the earlier videos was this needs to be done with a similar mode, meaning a similar type of exercise. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna address different energy systems in different parts of the body. I need to attack the same muscle groups and if I can attack them with the same movement or a similar movement, it's going to be the most effective, all right? So, one of the things I like to do this with specifically is squatting. I just think it's one of the best ways to develop my lower body, one of the best ways to develop my lower body strength, my leg drive for kettlebell lifting, my strength at large. Uh, so I love to do it with squatting. So for in this instance, we're gonna use as the mode, the squat. Now, I might change from phase to phase the type of squat I'm doing especially if the load needs to be very heavy in one and then very light in another. So that's fine, but I'm gonna be squatting the whole time, okay? The next thing we're gonna look at is in each of the workouts you're gonna be doing, you're gonna have a target repetition scheme, all right? So when you lay out your program, when you're planning out weeks in advance what you're gonna be doing, you're gonna know each workout has a target repetition scheme to achieve for several of these phases. And the last phase plays by its own rules, but the first three, the target repetition scheme in this instance we're going to use is five. And if you were starting the Synergy's training protocol, the first workouts you'd be doing would be with a target repetition scheme of five. And what that means is going to make more sense when I go into the different phases. Okay? The next thing you need when you go into this protocol is some kind of RPE scale. Rate of perceived exertion. How hard am I working? How hard does this feel? As we talked about in the last video, your perception and your body's perception of how hard exercise is, is extremely important. I would argue in most cases, most cases for most people, especially normal people, not super athletes or whatever, um, I think the RPE scale is one of the most useful tools in the entire world. Just the feedback of how hard was something. As a trainer, you know, I mean, I can read people's faces and expressions pretty well and I can see if they're shaking, but you know, some people hide it well. The, having people get good at identifying how hard they're working is one of the greatest tools you could possibly have. And it's a skill that you're going to have to develop. And you want to be honest with yourself. And that might take some time to get used to. Because um, if you grossly exaggerate, all this isn't going to work. But I like to use a 1 to 5. You can use a 1 to 10 scale. You can use any scale you want. But I like 1 to 5. And this is why I like 1 to 5. It's a very simple cut and dry thing. On a 1 to 5 scale, 1 means it was effortless. I could do this all day. It's not fatiguing at all. Two means it's an easily repeatable task with little to no fatigue. It's just an easy set. If I do a set at a three, it means it was moderate. It is repeatable. However, there is some fatigue, so I'm not going to be able to do this forever. Three is generally what we consider a working weight. Three difficulty, right in the middle. So I'm trying to do strength training, set a five by five or whatever. Working at a three is pretty good, and then maybe by the end, getting to a four when you start to fatigue is nice. That's a really nice sweet spot. Speaking of four, four means it was hard, and it was repeatable maybe, or maybe one more time. Hard means I'm not gonna be able to do this much more, but I probably could do it one more time, or maybe do it one more time. Also with a four, I'm looking at something that was highly fatiguing. Again, meaning, you know, I'm gonna run out of energy quickly doing this. So that's what a four means. Five, that's it. A nightmare difficulty, not repeatable, near 100% effort. We're looking at 96 and up percent of what you're capable of. I certainly can't do more after this. That's what five means. And if you fail, well, you failed, all right? That's failure. Okay, so I really like the one to five scale. I'm gonna be using that in this example. Once you have all this intact, you can build a workout, right? So you're gonna have all this stuff prepared. You're gonna know what your target is before you go into the workout. And in this instance, we're going to do squats. So the first one is going to be, um, first phase 
is real simple. Progressive load, warm up, movement prep, whatever you want to call it. And we've all done this before. I mean, when you learn to lift in high school, this is what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to start, let's just give you some examples here. I'm going to start with the bar, right? 45 pounds, I'm going to do a set of 20, whatever. And I'll throw some weight on. I have 95, put some 25s on. I'm going to do a set of 12. Then I'm going to throw the plates on there, guys. I'm going to do 135, and I'm going to do a set of 8, right? And so on and so forth, up to a point. What's the point? And this is where the target repetition scheme comes in. The goal of phase one, the phase one goal, I want to get to an RPE of three, a working weight. Remember I called this a working weight. You know, I want to get to a moderate difficulty, RPE of three at the target rep scheme. All right, let's for argument's sake say, this gentleman, it's a very easy number, it's an identifiable number, he gets to 225 as he warms up and reduces reps, and gets it, let me say by the next set, he's doing a set of five at, you know, um, you know, 185, and then he moves her up to two plates, and at two plates, he gets five, and it's at an RPE of five, and he's achieved it. Or excuse me, an RPE of three, He's achieved it, he's achieved the goal. Now it's time to move on to the next phase, okay? So this is what we're looking for. A comfortable working set, that's when this phase ends, all right? And this is nothing revolutionary. This is just you preparing to do the next phase, which is peak effort. Peak effort is exactly what it sounds like, working as hard as possible. The goal of the peak effort phase is to achieve an RPE of five, or very near five, right? So a hard four, or if you're using a one to 10 scale, a nine or 10, okay? Right, an RPE, a high RPE at the target rep range, which is five in this case, for this workout. So. Let's suppose you got 225, there's an RPE of three. Hmm, you know what? It's only a three. I can throw a 10 on each side and I know I can do it. So he does. So there's a 10 on each side, he has 245. He gets five with it and his RPE was a four. It was hard, it was a hard set. Okay, now it might be a three again, in which case you'd add more weight. Okay, well in this case he got a four. He knows he can do more than that or do a couple sets here. So he's going to increase the, this is peak effort after all, he's going to increase the weight in the peak effort phase. And now he's going to make a more conservative jump. He's going to go 255. Now, depending what happens here, right, he's going to make some decisions. There's a point at which you're going to move on to phase three, and that's when you get an RPE of five at the target rep range of three, or target, target um, repetition range of five. However, that might not happen. You might overshoot it, right? You might fail. You might, you know, something might happen. In which case, you are going to make an estimate. Let's use, let's for, for now, just say everything went smoothly. He does this, 255, and guess what? It's a five. Great. Now he's going to move on, and he's going to use this number to calculate the weight for the next phase, which we'll get into in a second. But if he didn't do this, and he didn't get a five, right? Let's suppose he did this, and it was a four, a four again, and then he moves up. He goes for 265. He does it, but he gets only four reps. Well, he didn't make it. He didn't fail. Let's say he didn't go to failure, but he knows he wouldn't have gotten the fifth rep. He just did a very hard set of four. Well, he's got a, he got a max set of four, but he didn't get the five. Well, now he's got to make an estimation. Well, if I got five here and I got four here, and I know I could do this, and I, this was this was too difficult. I didn't complete this one. I can make a rough estimate that. 260 would have probably been my RPE of five. You know what I'm saying? So you make a conservative estimate. Now, if this jump was bigger, you always make a more conservative estimate. Or you could just go with the last successful five, either one. 
And I just want to state this. This is an overtraining protocol. When you look at the volume that's going to be done at the end of this freaking thing, it's a lot of work. So when you're doing these heavy lifts, when you have to make estimations, right, if things don't go according to plan or, you know, you, ha you have to take some guesses or you have to bail out early, whatever the case might be, always estimate conservatively, okay? So that's what you would do. So the, the, the trick here is to establish kind of what my max set of um, five my max effort or max weight would be at the target rep range. Um, this is something, because of this training protocol, you're always going to know. You're never going to need to do any testing because you're constantly going to be pushing into a peak portion of the workout. Now, it's a very small portion of the workout. And as you saw here, I kind of established it in three sets. When I do this, I really like to do this in three sets. Um, that's kind of what I gun for. Sometimes I'll even make conservative weight jumps to make it three sets, right? before I move on. Although you could do it in two. You could hit it on the head in one if you're a good guesser or you really know what's going on. That's really what this is. It's like, it's like a game of good guessing. Well, up until this point. Now we have some calculations to do. All right. Let's, for argument's sake, let's just keep things simple. Let's say here, I got this is all sloppy here. Let's say, let's go back in time and let's pretend that the 255 was what he ended up getting for his RPE of five, just to keep things simple. Okay, and he did it in two sets. All right, this was really hard. I did it. Damn, I'm done. I can't go heavier than that. I don't think I could do that again. That's a five. Okay. What you're going to do now is move on to the next phase, which is low rest working sets. So if you haven't figured it out yet, right? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, low rest working, working sets. The way you calculate, now this has to be less weight than this. As we kind of talked about before, right, we've now exhausted our, our intense energy system. We've exhausted our ATP PC system. We've tapped into the glycolytic system a little bit here, right? But now we're going to drop things down to working within that glycolytic system specifically. And as I mentioned in the one video, I really want to challenge its ability to recover. I want to push its ability to flush its limiting factor, the metabolic byproducts that build up as the result of glycolysis. And the way I'm going to do that is with low rest. Okay? So I'm going to intensely work within the glycolytic system and I'm going to do it with low rest. As I've mentioned, for the workout, I'm going to continue in this phase to use my target rep range of five. Okay? The goal here is to work at the target rep range and I want to do it with low rest periods. And I want to do it at a weight that is a specific percentage of what I used here. Now, this is something I'm not going to go over completely in this video. Um, depending on what the target range is, the percentage of that load you're going to use is going to change. In this case, when I'm doing five, it's going to be 80%. All right. I'm going to do it at 80% of what that was. Now, I'm not the best at math, but we can calculate this real quick. All right, well, 80% of 100 is 80. 80% of 200 would then be 160, right? And then 50 is half of that, so you could add 40 to that, right? And then, all right, so it's about 200 pounds. It's a little bit, it's like 202 or something like that. But again, you're going to always round conservatively when you're doing any sort of estimation in this program. So if I'm going to work at 80%, and again, there's a guideline to this, and I will provide that later on. But if I'm going to work at 80% of 255, it's about 200 pounds conservative estimate. So I'm going to be doing 200 pound sets of a similar exercise here. So I'll back squat, take a lot of weight off the bar, a good portion of weight, and here we go. When I say low rest, what do I mean? And let rest, not RPE, is going to be our determining factor here. We're going to start these sets, right, 200 pounds, at our target rep range, and I'm going to rest 30 seconds. I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to repeat this, okay? At some point, I'm going to realize 30 seconds is not enough time to recover. I'm going to extend my rest period. I'm going to rest 45 seconds. Fuck, that was still hard. I'm going to rest 50 seconds. 
Okay, I got it. Let's try it again. I'm going to rest 50 seconds. Dear fucking Lord, I can't do it. I'm going to rest a minute. Once you have to get to 60 seconds to rest, time to terminate. Okay? Uh, how long will this take? Well, depending who you are and how well trained you are and what your muscle endurance is like, um, this might happen in three or four sets. This might happen in eight sets. All right? The intensity, the overall load, is not that much. If you compare it to typical strength training, you're really working below, really working below the uh, threshold. What this really is, is super intense to the glycolytic system for the aforementioned reasons that I've said, where I'm going to be really challenging its limiting factor, its ability to flush out waste product and reconvert it into usable material. Okay, This is going to help you really challenge the things that shut that system down and thus help you build muscle endurance very quickly. You're also doing it in a fatigued state. So you're getting a lot less help from your higher energy systems. All right, and that's basically how the structure of phase three is going to go. Final phase, phase four. <clears throat> Oxidative tempo lifting. We already kind of go over the idea of oxidative lifting, right? So this needs to be a long set. When I say a long set, we talked about the guidelines. I'd like it to be three minutes. Three minutes is an intense oxidative stimulus. A three-minute set at a somewhat even tempo, although it can increase, and you will probably increase it if you're doing it right. So how am I going to do that? We back squatted here. Well, the mode has to stay the same. I could do body weight squats. I could do goblet squats. I could load a Bulgarian bag on my back or something like that, sandbag, and do squats loaded that way, right? And here, honestly, the loading is not so important. It's more about the tempo and the time, okay? I'm going to give you an example. The other day, I followed this protocol, okay? When I got here, I have a Bulgarian bag, right? It's like 45 pounds. I put it on my back. It's light loading. And I did my squats with that. It's a little bit of resistance. When I did them, I did them for three minutes straight. Now, I'm, we're going to talk about if you can't do three minutes, what to do. But I'm going to do them for three minutes straight. The first minute, I got 23, and it felt easy. The second minute, I got 27. I sped up a little bit. And the last minute, I wanted to make sure I was working. So at the end, I kind of wanted to feel a little bit of a burn. That means I'm working just outside of that oxidative system. The glycolytic is kicking in, but I know for a majority of the time, this was the dominant system. I made three minutes. So the last one I did 29, I sped up a little bit more. At the end, I had a slight burning in my, in my legs, my, in my glutes and my quads. So again, this is a very perception-based thing. But essentially, what your goal is, is to work for three minutes here. This could be longer. Um, you know, Depending on how we set the protocol up, you know, this could be different. Um, like I said, week to week, you're going to have different rep schemes, different target schemes. So just to, you know, does this sound familiar? You know, the, the one that works really well is three, five, three, and then one or two. Does that sound familiar? We five, three, one is a very popular strength training protocol, you know, so it's been done before, right? Um, I'm just taking it further, like I said, and by targeting, you know, each energy system individually. Now, real quick. Uh, this is becoming a quite a long video, but this is really how you set the workout up. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Uh, I want to say, if you cannot do this whole three-minute thing, which is probably typical at first, you could break it into sets, okay? I could do one minute on, one minute off. All right? And, you know, in that same thing, I could do, you know, whatever, let's say 25, 25, 25. You know, the next week what I could try doing is 120. Three sets of 120, 120, 120, 120. Then the following week I could try doing two sets of 130. And you can build up that way. Yes, I know that doesn't really cover what I'm trying to do here. We talked about like an intense oxidative stimulus, but actually with the one-to-one -one work rest ratio, you know, you are kind of staying within that. But the whole point of this is really like, you know, you're going to build slowly this three-minute set this way through condensation, you know. 
And um, the other thing is, you know, you can always do less weight. So, I mean, body weight squat is probably possible for three minutes for most people. Um, so you can build this three minute, this oxidative set that way. It's another way to approach it. And most people are probably going to have to do that. Now, really quickly, before we finish this, and this is a long video with a lot of information and this whole protocol here and everything. And this is really how I lay it out. When I'm doing this for general strength, I like to do this for squats one day. I like to do it for an upper body push and an upper body pull another day. So I actually do it. Also, sometimes I'll split back into a separate one and I'll address back differently. Um, but it works well with the upper body. It works especially well with bench press. I would not do this with deadlift. No fucking way are you doing that after that with deadlift and then hinging for three fuck it. No, you're not doing that. Don't do this with deadlift. Don't hurt yourself. Don't be retarded. Um, that much bending over and your core under load don't work out well. But it does work incredibly well with squatting. Now, what I will also say, this protocol works really, really well with a total body training method. As I said, I'm a kettlebell lifter. The kettlebell lift I did in a, now many, many videos ago of me training with the clean and press is a very total body exercise. You can utilize the same principle, but in terms of power, because that's what the kettlebell lifts are. They have momentum. They have power elements involved. You can do the same thing with them although I do it quite differently. Um, it's more about time and pacing and tempo. There's a lot more weight shifting in it. I'm not using consistent weights. for So in that protocol, it's different, but the overarching theme is the same. There are several phases, each of which targeting different muscle groups. Here, we're warming up the nervous system, preparing the body for heavier amounts of mechano load. Here, we are taking the load to the highest point possible. We are peaking nervous activation. We are peaking muscle recruitment. We are peaking muscular effort. We are doing as much intensity as possible in that ATP PC system. Here, we're taxing the glycolytic system by bringing its recovery, by bringing its um, limiting factors to their ultimate test, by repeated efforts of moderate weight, moderate to heavy weight, and we're doing it over and over again with low rest that we're going to continue to extend until we get to the end of this period where we're now getting into the safe rest phase for the glycolytic system. At that point, we terminate it. We're no longer challenging that. We're out of energy. We then finish targeting the oxidative system with these long sets. In this instance, three minutes. Or for beginners, they can build it slowly over time by doing sets that they can kind of condense. All right? Um, that's the general gist of it. That's how I build the program. That's what I'm going to be doing. You're going to see me do it. I'm going to be doing this actually... Um, you know, I'll actually probably do my next squat workout. I did one the other day, but um, I wasn't able to record it, like I said. So um, that's it. Um, go back. Look at it. If you have questions, write to me. Put them in the comment section. This is a lot of information. Um, I'm probably going to do one more video kind of talking about uh, how this works a little bit in depth, um, the dangers of it, the warnings of it, just so you get a better idea. And um, I think for now, that's enough information. That's a lot of lectures, a lot as hours of <laughs> video to watch. And, um, you know, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found it, you know, just you, it helped you think in a little bit different way. Um, that's why I'm putting it out there. Uh, I'm tired of looking at the same horse shit on the Internet with, you know, training and everything else. I, you know, I have a different approach to things that I find kind of interesting myself. And I thought I'd share it with everybody. And I'm going to show you how effective it is when you watch me train. All right? So digest that. I'm going to do one more for you, I think, just going over the risks associated with this and uh, how to go about it and things like that, how I like to break it down. And then for now, we'll leave it alone. You get to see me actually work out. You can see some interesting stuff and less boring science.